Welcome, FNUSA57 here. I'm back on my Xbox One, and today I am bringing you a beginner's guide slash 100% completionist guide for the game Subnautica. Hopefully you will enjoy. I'll go through and give you all the tips and tricks that I can think of to hopefully impart the information that I have learned while playing through this game to you and make it a hell of a lot easier. Now, before we go any further, I am loading my save up, which I have played one day, 13 hours and four minutes on, and I'm just about done with the game. So I recommend that you pause the video if you don't want any spoilers. Once again, if you don't want any spoilers, pause the video now. All right, now that the game loaded up, which I will say, if you're playing this on the Xbox, there's a number of features that the game does not have compared to PC, so it's actually a little more aggravating to play. But I'm going to stare at this wall so I don't give you any immediate spoilers and give you one last chance to pause the video while I explain what I'll be going over. I will literally go over everything that I can possibly think of to help you out in this game, but it is a exploration slash survival game. So most of the stuff that I will be providing you information on will spoil the story for you. That's why I recommend you pause if you don't want the story spoiled, but I will show you where to find the resources you need, how to get 100% of the achievements in game, and give you a shitload of tips, tricks, and just, you know, general gameplay information. With that being said, quickly I would like to show you the achievements. The achievements in this game, there's a total of 17 of them worth a uh, 1000 gamer score. All of them are secret achievements, so unless you look them up, you will not know what they are. And 90% of them can easily be obtained on one playthrough, with only a couple of them that you might miss, just depending on if you went to the location or not. But you can easily complete all achievements in one playthrough. With that being said, the final two achievements will unlock when you actually beat the game. So the first 15 achievements that I have, uh, the very first one's easy to get. It's getting your feet wet. All you have to do is dive into the water for the very first time. Uh, seaside living, you have to find the Degazi habitat on the floating island. Ancient technologies, you have to find the enforcement platform. Uh, settling in for the long haul, you have to build a habitat. Extinction event avoided, you have to repair the Aurora reactor. Personal propulsion, you have to build the sea moth. Follow the Degazi, you have to find the Degazi habitat in the Jelly Shroom Caves. 40 foot sub for one, you have to build the Cyclops. Man's best friend, you have to catch and release a cuttlefish. Ordered the prawn, you have to build a prawn suit. Sea monsters, find the Degazi habitat in the deep Grand Reef. Find the lost river, find the Degazi research facility. Well, not Degazi, but the disease research facility, I should say. Thermal activity, find the thermal plant. 14,000 leagues, which is find the primary containment facility. And optimal health, cure the infection. Now, like I said, most of these are story related with the final two achievements being leave nothing but time capsules and go among the stars. Those two achievements you will get when you actually complete the game if you have done everything correctly. So let's get back to just playing the game and surviving. I recommend you play on the game mode freedom. That is the setting that I have because you do not need to worry about food or water. However, if you are playing on the normal difficulty or hardcore difficulties, you will have to worry about your hunger and thirst meters, which aren't too terribly bad, but uh, something you do have to keep an eye on. Also, do not play on the mode creative or use console commands. If you do, the achievements will be disabled and you will not unlock them. So one of the first things that I would recommend that you do is go ahead and adjust down the volume a little bit because the music volume can be really loud and then make sure that you are familiar with your control layout because the control layout on this is a little bit weird where it puts like Y to jump and it can just be a little bit buggy. So familiarize yourself with that. This game is also kind of dark so keep that in mind and playing on xbox 
there is no way at all to pull up your coordinates. You also cannot play this game co-op where there is a mod that you can do that on PC and you can pull up your coordinates on PC. So sadly, there is no map. You have to do all of your navigation in this game solely by landmarks and beacons, which is a very nice little thing that you can make. So first and foremost, you are going to get stuck, as you can see. I have my little base here built, my little habitat, but that's not really a big thing. I'm going to show you on the map. It can vary a little bit to where it is, but you are basically going to get stuck at life pod one. All right, that is, or I don't know if it's actually called Life Pod 1, but it's the only Life Pod that you can actually enter and is working. So I'll take you over there. It's going to be in the same general vicinity every time, but it's not guaranteed to be in the exact same spot. So don't necessarily use my distances as a exact measurement for where you need to be. I do stress that you learn the different biomes in this game. They're pretty easy to tell uh, based on their coloring and depth, but you're going to want to keep an eye on that and certain landmarks so that you can actually navigate around. It's also a good idea to make beacons when you can, but it's pretty easy to start the game. Food you don't have to worry about too much because there's a bunch of small fish swimming around the area near your life pod so it's relatively easy to catch them and either cook them or cure them if you have access to salt which is again something that you can find all around you pretty much here at your starting life pod so i'm just gonna park and within about a uh, 100 by 100 meter range is where this life pod will spawn so Somewhere in this general area is where your life pod should be. As a first landmark indicator, you can use the Aurora. It's crashed almost at the edge of the map with its nose pointing north and its engines pointing south. Now, Floater Island is over there to the south and the enforcement platform is over there to the north. So those are a couple of landmarks that will always be in the exact same spot, and you can use them to your advantage. Also, inside this life pod, you will have your med kit fabricator. Do not hesitate to go ahead and use this. It fabricates a med kit roughly every 30 minutes for you. You'll also have your radio that you have to repair, the basic control systems you have to repair, and of course your fabricator with some basic storage. So you'll be using this for the most part. The very first thing that you need to do if you're playing on a difficulty where you have to worry about food and water, you'll want to slightly worry about securing food and water, but you don't have to worry about it too terribly much. The main thing that you're gonna need to do as soon as you start is you're going to need to build the repair tool, which takes silicone rubber, cave sulfur, and titanium so that you can repair everything. It's also a good idea to build the scanner that takes a battery and titanium. And then as you go throughout the game, you'll be able to find the other pieces that you need. And I would also recommend building a survival knife pretty much as quickly as you can or if you can at least find one, um, but it's pretty easy to build that. Once you have the basic tools, you can kind of move on from there, but do not hesitate to build waterproof lockers. You'll probably need to build a couple waterproof lockers in order to store the stuff that you get. So once you have your scanner and repair tool, knife, and ideally a sea glide, you're gonna be able to explore the area a lot easier. So periodically you'll find different items. Uh, this is some random stuff that I dropped on the ground. There's really no point. Uh, if you drop an item on the ground, it will stay there. It doesn't disappear. So as you can see, I dropped my old air tank. I dropped a bottle of water, all that stuff. But wherever your life pod spawns, you're going to have some really decent and easy resources. You're going to have the acid mushrooms around you. 
You're also going to have these calcium tubes around you. And uh, you scrape the calcium tube with a knife to get one of the ingredients you need to make bleach so you can disinfect water. You also use your knife to harvest a lot of different plants and different resources. Um, for instance, one of the resources you'll have right here is table coral. You just hit it with your knife to break it, and then you can go ahead and pick up the pieces of table coral. That's actually one of the few resources that can only be found in this shallow area. Another tip, keep your eyes out for brain coral. I recommend scanning everything so you get the information on it, but brain coral will periodically release oxygen, and that will go ahead and help fill up your air tank. Um, so mainly you have acid mushrooms around this area and the table coral. You will also have what's called limestone chunks, and the limestone chunks you can break in order to harvest the resources from those. Uh, now once you go through and you build a few different things, you're going to be swimming around and you're going to look for wrecks, various different wrecks. In those wrecks, you will find pieces that you can scan. Now, it's not consistent what pieces you will find, but you will find various different pieces to different things that you can scan. And once you get all the pieces, you can then go ahead and make the items. So this is what you need for bleach to uh, make your disinfected water. Uh, it's very simple. It's salt and a coral tube sample. So if you're playing on a difficulty that requires food and water, that is the item for your water. And then as far as food is concerned, you can eat the fish and there's a bunch of plants on Floater Island. Now, once you've started the game, it's entirely up to you. You will get periodic radio messages that will give you different coordinates and different spots for you to check out thereby giving you a few pieces for you to scan, like the Sea Glide, which does function as a flashlight. In addition to it, it allows you to swim a great deal faster than what you would normally be able to. My personal recommendation, once you go ahead and get a little bit of resources set up, you build some tools and things like that so that you have your basic repair tool, Sea Glide, a knife, stuff of that information, I would recommend that you go to Floater Island. You are doing this out of order if you go to Floater Island though. You do not have to do this in any specific order. You can actually do this in any order that you want. But I would recommend you make a couple beacons, at least three, because they're easy to make. They're copper, uh, basically copper and titanium if I remember correctly. And then you can name those beacons whatever you want and place them wherever you want. So like here in the shallows, you'll see there's peepers, there's keyhole fish, there's boomerang fish, there's bladder fish, all stuff like that that you can eat. Also, there is this kelp vine uh, or creeper vine, I believe is what it's called. And this is a very important resource. If you hit it with your knife, it's a little bit buggy, but you'll get a creeper vine sample. That's very important. And if you pick up these little pods, the seed clusters, not only can you plant them if you want, but you can go ahead and make your silicone rubber. So you'll also find salt deposits if you need those for your food. Here's the limestone chunks, which they can have titanium and copper, um, and I believe a couple other things you, in them. You simply just break them and pick up whatever it is that's in there. I recommend you pick up everything that you possibly can. Like I said, if you have to build floating lockers, go ahead and build it because initially it won't be a big deal, but later on you're going to want to have those resources because things start taking a lot of resources. Uh, this is one of the very first wrecks that you'll come to. You'll see there's a little odd looking piece. It doesn't look like it belongs there and a little pop up in the bottom right hand corner saying that I can scan it. So pull out your scanner and scan it. If you already know what it is, it'll just give you titanium. If you don't know what it is, then it will give you the blueprint or part of the blueprint to make whatever the item is. With that being said though, make sure you thoroughly explore the wrecks. Keep an eye on your oxygen meter, 
And you'll also find data boxes from time to time around those wrecks and abandoned PDAs. Those will often give you more information on where things are, uh, possible coordinates for other life pods, or simply blueprints. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a lot of beacons out here. I actually have way too many beacons because I can get myself confused easily. Now, since you won't have a beacon, if you are going to Floater Island before you actually get that Aurora Rendezvous, Rendezvous Point quest, before you get that to pop up, the easiest way to get there is to use the Aurora's engines as a guide point. That's the easiest way to do it. Don't worry about these big ass Leviathan, well not Leviathan, but they're like sea traders. Um, Reefbacks, I do believe is their name. Don't worry about those. Those aren't really a threat to you. Um, they do have resources on them that you can farm if you want, but there's really not much of a point if you're going for just completing the game. If you're going for running through the game and then building like a big base or something and don't really care about the achievements, that's entirely up to you and will probably be a completely different play style. So you'll start to notice that the island will render in. It is about south, southwest, roughly. And this is Floater Island. So if I surface, you can see the engines of the Aurora, and we are roughly 1,250 meters south of the starting life pod. Now there's a bunch of stuff that you can find on here, on this island. This is also the achievement, obviously, for finding the Degazi habitat and that stuff. Uh, this will also help you with another achievement that's really cool. So go ahead and scan everything. Most of the stuff here isn't going to help you that much, except for the bulba tree. You can plant that if you want. As you can see, I slash stuff with my knife, and I pick up samples, basically. Uh, don't jump down there in the center, but you kind of just want to go around the island. There is a path. There's a cave. There's a couple different things. There's a building up top on that mountain. There's a building up top on that mountain. You'll want to go up to both of those and scan the items that are in there, plus pick up the PDAs. But we're not here for that right now. There's also a ton of food here on this island. So keep that in mind. There's a bunch of food that you can pick up. You can also get the fruit and get seeds from it. There will be a couple little enemies here, but uh, don't worry about them too much. You're going to want to scan this room here. You're going to want to scan the grow beds. And this is like some of the food I mentioned about the Chinese potato and the marble melon. Marble melon is freaking fantastic because of the fact that it's um, also, I believe, high in water. And if you knife the melon itself, you will notice that you get a whole bunch of seeds and then you can plant those seeds and there you go. Food and water taken care of. Super easy. Go in here, pick up and scan everything, run around to the other side, make sure you pick up and scan everything. There's going to be a couple little creepers, there'll be pieces for the stasis rifle or repulsion uh, cannon, I believe, repulsor cannon. Come up in here, scan this, open the data box, that's what a data box looks like. It is possible to have duplicates. Go down the ladder, pick up the last data pad, achievement unlocked. Uh, at that point, go up to both of the buildings, scan the items and resources up there, and then you're pretty much done on Floater Island. There isn't much of anything here for you. If you want to build something over here, you can, but I wouldn't really recommend it. The next step is going to be building your habitat so you can get some sustainable food sources going if you need that and so that you have a base of operations where you can actually store stuff because you will fill up your storage insanely fast if you don't. Also, you will get a radio message mentioning that the Aurora's engines are going critical because of damage in the dark matter drive, and eventually they will explode, thereby 
causing this entire area to become irradiated. Any area near the aurora will become irradiated. So as you're going around, you will find the blueprints for the radiation suit or be given the blueprint for the radiation suit and you need to make it relatively quickly. Now for that you are going to need lead so that's where you're going to be looking at the next resource called the sandstone chunk or um, outcropping either name depending on what version of the game you're on and that can actually give you lead. It can give you silver lead or I think it's gold but I can't say for 100% certainty. You can also find a lot of interesting resources on these uh, reef backs, but do be careful of this little plant right here. This little worm looking thing will shoot barbs at you that do a considerable amount of damage. So just keep that in mind. There are a lot of enemies. There's a lot of stuff in this game that isn't hostile to you, but there's also a lot of stuff in this game that is hostile to you. Some of it you will need for resources and I'll show you how to get those as we progress through that point in the game. Now obviously you're gonna be limited on how fast you can move around initially because you won't have the sea moth, but it's pretty early on that you're gonna get the sea moth. So you'll get the pieces for that, the radiation suit, the sea glide, all of those are fairly uh, story related, fairly easy pieces to get you'll get the achievement for building the sea moth when you build the sea moth and um, another thing to keep in mind is when you're looking for titanium you can pick up metal salvage and you can break down the metal salvage for titanium that's like the first thing that you'll learn most of the time so once you have the radiation suit you're going to need a couple of things and that's why I recommended that you build a base. So you can see where my life pod is. This is where I start the game with the using the Aurora as a landmark. Now, you're going to want to go, in my opinion, your base can be built anywhere you darn so feel like it. But, in my opinion, I really like to build my base over here in what's like affectionately known as the Red Zone. It's relatively sheltered. Um, it's not the shallows, but it's relatively shallow compared to the rest of the biomes. And it's a pretty good resource farming spot. I'm not going to say it's super centrally located to all quest objectives, but it's fairly centrally located to most of the resources that you will need. And it's about 100 meters down, so it's outside of crush depth even without the upgrades plus you'll find a number of wrecks and a number of pieces of stuff for you to scan the only bad thing is transferring all the resources that you've previously farmed from your life pod to your new base there's also a life pod right here life pod 17 you will eventually have to stop by there uh, you'll get a radio message for it Food isn't really a big deal in this area. Again, there's a bunch of small fishes swimming around. Plus, you'll have those seeds that you can go ahead and actually use. Now, you'll notice that my base has a little bit of uh, kind of a what the hell is this look. Well, that was intentional. You don't really need that much for your base. You can build it as big or as small as you want. And most of the resources are relatively cheap. Um, it's titanium and lead. You need the habitat builder tool to go ahead and build pretty much anything. Uh, you'll eventually want to build a couple grow beds depending on what you're trying to grow. They might have to be inside or outside. If I try to put like this marble melon seed in an outdoor planter that's underwater it just won't let you and it won't grow it has to be planted inside or on dry land eventually you will get this structure here called the moon pool it's a really nice structure to have because it allows you to put vehicle upgrades on your vehicles and it also will recharge your vehicles from your base's power but initially what you do is you make this basic room here it's a general purpose room and you make a hatch that allows you to access it 
put a solar panel on the roof, you're good to go. Uh, then I recommend that you make a med kit fabricator so you can get two med kits every half hour, one from your base, one from the life pod. Make a fabricator so you can make your resources and make a radio. <coughs> Excuse me. This prevents you from ever having to return to your life pod if you don't want to. You can decorate your habitat as you see fit. Uh, for me, I was only worried about storage space, so I made a bunch of standing lockers and a couple of wall lockers. I also made a bed, and once I unlocked it, you'll need to make the modification station. Whether you make an aquarium or not is entirely up to you. I made an aquarium just so I could show the fish that you could eat and have something to look at. You can also use the bed to sleep through the dynamic day-night cycle if you want. Then I made a scanner room. Again, you'll find the pieces by swimming around. And at this point, you'll probably have everything. This is with max upgrades to range on it. But it allows you to search for any material that is within the range of the scanner room. It does require constant power while it's scanning, so keep that in mind that you have enough power that your base doesn't go dark. The other thing you will eventually want to make is called the alien containment, and you'll need to put a hatch on it. It requires at least one general purpose room, or two of them stacked on top of each other if you want to build a two-story room, which is entirely up to you. Then you can throw the eggs that you find, the creature eggs, in here and hatch them. You'll learn what the egg is, plus it's needed for the achievement. Now, pretty much everything in here is hostile to you if you met it in the outside world. Uh, all of these are predators with the exception of the spade fish and cuttlefish that I have in here. So this is a little cuttlefish. He's needed for the achievement. You have to hatch him in here. Then you take him outside your base, drop him in the water from your inventory, achievement unlocked. At that point, you cannot pick up the cuttlefish, so if you want, you'll have to reload your game save from earlier. I should mention that now. The only saving in this game is manual, so when you want to save, you're going to want to make sure that you open the pause menu and then save manually when you're at a point that you can do that. So, now that you've swum around a little bit, built at least a general purpose room, with a fabricator and a few little things, you're going to want to get ready to go inside the Aurora. To go inside the Aurora, you're going to need the radiation suit. You're going to need the repulsor or propulsion cannon, whichever one you have. Stasis rifle is helpful, but not necessarily needed. You'll want a knife, and you're going to need to take some sort of light source, med kit, and at least one, if not two, fire extinguishers with you. I stress taking a few med kits with you and that's pretty much gonna be good uh, you find a lot of food and water inside the aurora so you don't really need to worry too much about that maybe bring a spare battery for your repair tool but uh other than that you'll be good and your sea glide of course so that's generally the next step as i said you don't have to do these in a specific order but I would recommend doing them in this particular order. Uh, so at this point, you may or may not have the Seamoth, but you probably will not have the mobile vehicle bay. The mobile vehicle bay is what you need to actually build the Seamoth prawn suit and Neptune rocket launch pad. That you find pieces for either in the Aurora or you can also find them around in a couple of different spots, uh, mainly Mushroom Forest. Mushroom Forest is a really good place. This is what the mobile vehicle bay looks like once you've made it. It floats on the surface of the water. You can also see one of my original things is the floating air pump. This is a really unique device because it does not run out of power. It will sit there forever. So when I was building my base down here with just a basic oxygen tank, I made this floating air pump so I could go up to only a depth of 38, 37 meters and refill my oxygen, then dive back down and continue building the base. Uh, if you're familiar with the building controls in this game, it's easy to do that quicker and you don't need the floating air pump, but I really enjoyed having it. 
That's my rocket launch pad. So your next step is going to go back to the Aurora. Also, if you're struggling with cave sulfur, in the shallows, you'll find a bunch of little caves. And there will be a plant, a little red plant, inside the cave. A fish will come out of it and chase you and explode. What you want to do is swim towards the fish as fast as you possibly can. You'll end up missing the explosion. The fish will swim past you and explode where it's out of range of you. So don't worry too much about that. Gas pods, don't worry about them either. They're only useful for making a torpedo. And I have actually never made a torpedo in this game. I have yet to find a use for them. Because other than fish that you can eat, you cannot kill a single thing in this game. At best, you can incapacitate it. So as you've swum around and dealt with some of the basic resources, you've got your silicone, you've got your knife, I would recommend upgrading your air tank because you can make a high capacity tank. That's really easy to do. It's just glass, which you'll find the crystal for, well, glass, titanium, a couple little things. But you'll find all of that in the red zone. So we're going to approach one of the more dangerous areas now. There's also plenty of wrecks here for you to explore that you'll get different pieces from. You cannot get this close to the Aurora once the drive core has exploded if you do not have the radiation suit, so bear that in mind. Also bear in mind upon entering this area, the crash area, there is going to be a ridge. And the reason why this is important is because you do not want to cross it. So there's various sand shark predators. They're not a super big deal to vehicles, but they will do a lot of damage to you. It's relatively safe to park your sea moth here on this ledge, but do not go past it. Behind and underneath the Aurora, you will find a lot of resources and a lot of boxes that contain batteries, power cells, food, water, things like that. Uh, but there is a Leviathan. I do believe it is a Reaper Leviathan, to be specific, that lurks back there. And uh, he will pretty much one-hit kill your sub, so be very, very careful with that. And that's why I recommend you park here and use your Sea Glide to toy with him, because he will not come to this point. You'll only have to worry about those little sharks. Now, there's two entrances into the Aurora, but I use the primary entrance. I just think it's easier. These are the boxes that I mentioned. If you see them, open them. There's always good stuff that you can use in them, unless you're playing on freedom and you don't need the food or water. Proceeding through this area, there's plenty of metal salvage, plenty of boxes, all sorts of stuff of this nature. Now, I'm not going to go in the full way, but I will explain what you will need to do inside the Aurora. I'm only not going in there because it's a super annoying area, so no point in taking the longer time. There's going to be stalkers, sand sharks, and also, if I turn off my lights, I might just get to show you there is yet another Leviathan class enemy who lurks in front. Uh, this game on the Xbox does have a problem with render distance. The faster you're moving, the more likely something is to not render in. And I might even get chomped on myself. Um, but here in front of the Aurora, you can find more resources as well. There's still more stalkers and sand sharks and things of that nature. Um, those aren't that hard to avoid. But the further out you move, especially into this area where it starts to drop off, the greater the chance you're going to run into this Leviathan. So I recommend you simply uh, don't do that. So you'll have to surface because you're going to need to get into the section of the Aurora that has exploded. And the ship is going to be on fire and shaking and debris can fall down on you and it's super annoying. But basically, once you get in to the Aurora, which will be right here at this point, there's a broken piece of metal. You can run up there and run into the ship. You can explore underneath the Aurora if you want to, but uh, I haven't found a good reason really 
to explore the front of the Aurora. Once you go up the ramp, it's a straight linear path with a bunch of boxes. Follow that path continuously. Once you follow that path, you will be able to get inside the Aurora at a point. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of various fires and stuff that you have to put out. So go ahead and put those out. Uh, you can also get up in the Aurora right here. This is the easier section. You can even see a couple of these boxes right here. So I'll uh, show you real quick, just for anyone who wants this part, if you're having trouble with it. But you'll go up here, go left, follow the path, put out the fires, grab the boxes, go in till you get to a quarter. To the left, it'll say cargo hold. To the right, I forget what it says, but you go to the right, scan, get the data, go to the left, use your propulsion cannon to move the boxes or crouch jump over the boxes that are in your way. Proceed down there, you'll come to a door, you have to look up the code for the door or wait for the uh, broadcast or look for a tablet that tells you what the code is. Throughout this area, until you get inside the ship, there's going to be these little creepy cave crawler things. They are hostile. They don't do a lot of damage, but they are very annoying. This is the second entrance you can unblock with the propulsion or repulsion cannon if you have it, but I don't recommend entering this particular way as it is the exit and a far more dangerous route than just going in through the cargo bay. Once you're in the cargo bay, scan all the pieces of stuff that are in the cargo bay so you can unlock the new items. Proceed down. When you drop down, there's going to be a flooded section that has the prawn suit room and the sea moth uh, bay down there. You're going to want to go into both of those sections and, and scan all the parts that you can get your hands on, plus pick up any upgrades that may be there. Uh, once you go through that, you're going to also encounter an area where there's a bunch of little leeches, basically. Uh, they look like leeches. They'll swim at you. They'll attach themselves to you, pull out your knife, and just cut them off real quick. Otherwise, they'll do constant damage. Uh, go through that area. Explore the sea moth pool. Uh, go to the drive core room. Use your repair tool. Once again, there's leeches in there. Use your repair tool to repair all of the cracks on the drive cores that will get you an achievement then go ahead and go back out use your cutting torch if you brought it and you can get into the prawn suit room um, put out the fires and you can get into the crew room where there will be a couple different cabins including the captain's quarters again you can look up the door code for that or you can wait for a broadcast that'll tell you what the door code is in there you get the neptune rocket there's other stuff to scan for building items and things of that nature plus batteries and resources for you to pick up exit out of there make sure you scanned all the prawn suits dive into the flooded section of the prawn suit bay Find your way through that maze, which will bring you to the lab, scan what you need in the lab, and then exit through that door that I showed you. At which point, after a couple days of in-game time, the radiation will dissipate and you will no longer need to use the radiation suit. You can freely swap that out for a reinforced diving suit once you find the pieces and have scanned the pieces to get the blueprint for the reinforced diving suit. Uh, I didn't really get that until very much late in the game just because I couldn't find it to save my life. So, at that point, you'll have various quests that pop up. You'll get the achievement for averting the disaster. And it's pretty much just general gameplay through there, focusing on resource farming, uh, exploring any wrecks that you haven't explored, waiting for radio messages, and once you get those radio messages, going and exploring those potential areas. At that point, you will either have or be very close to having the mobile vehicle bay and the sea moth, plus you'll also have the resources or at least the blueprint for the prawn suit. You might even have the blueprint for the moon pool because it is random in every game world. Only a few things are in the same locations as they are in every game. Everything else is randomized. The wrecks will be in the same locations, but what's in the wrecks can be different. So once you've gotten that uh, achievement, as I mentioned earlier, there was an achievement for finding the Degazi habitat. There's a couple of them related to the Degazi habitats. 
and you will have all of these little icons that you can go through. Like, um, I don't need that one so I can toggle it off, but this one, you'll have the different life pods. So you'll get those, check them out. There's usually good things to scan at every one of the life pods. <coughs> you'll find this one down here, the proposed Agazi habitat, 250 meters. There's an achievement for that one. Uh, there is another one for the proposed Dasagi, or sorry, Degazi habitat, 500 meters. This is a very important one. This is the uh, one that will give you the achievement. And then, of course, there's another 250 meter one, and that's basically it. At that point, that's all of the markers that the game itself will give you. So now you need to focus on really finding your way around using only landmark navigation because it's not going to tell you where the rest of the stuff is. So like I mentioned, there's parts for the Cyclops. There's the three different parts. I'll actually show you. I'll show you all of them right now if uh, I can pull that up. Because that's going to be a vehicle that you need later on. It's not really super important immediately. Um, upgrading to the high capacity O2 tank and the rebreather. That's a pretty good thing to have. And getting a compass is a very good thing to have. Copper wire is easy. It's just copper. Wiring kits are easy. It's just silver. Relatively basic and straightforward. Radiation suit. I showed you how to get the fiber mesh. The reinforced diving suit. It's a little bit more complicated because it's synthetic fibers and diamonds. But again, you'll find those because we're going to go into the area next that you need that. So if you're stuck a little bit on finding the parts for the vehicles, more specifically finding the parts for the Cyclops, because the Cyclops is a really hard one to find. There's actually three pieces for it. There's the hull, the bridge, and the engine. The bridge and engine can be found in the Aurora and underneath or behind the Aurora. But the Cyclops hull you will probably have to go to a different spot for. Now, this is also a spot that you are going to need to remember for future reference. As you can see, I have my beacons marked with random ass names on them, depending on where they are. I recommend that you have these beacons because it does make life a hell of a lot easier. There's one that I am not very fond of. <clears throat> this is the first place that you will have to go. And I don't like it at all. This is one of the entrances. But this is a biome completely unique to itself down here called the Drelly, sorry, Jelly Shroom Caves. And there's an achievement for it, of course. There is a Degazi habitat down here. And you can get away without the depth upgrades for this. But there's all these jelly mushrooms and they have those little crab snakes inside of them. And they are super freaking annoying. So I don't recommend you spend much time down there. It is possible to find some of the resources that you'll need later on, like the magnetite uh, ore and things like that. But uh, I don't recommend spending a lot of time down there because that is the area that has actually killed me the most out of all of the biomes, even though it's not listed as a dangerous area. It's listed as like a medium class danger. As you can see, here's a sea moth fragment right here. Like I said, you'll probably have that by the time you actually get done with the Aurora. Or shortly after it. But you need the mobile vehicle bay in order to make the sea moth. Which is going to bring us to our next step in the game. Again, your resource management, food and water management, if you need them, is entirely up to you. But we are going to go to yet another location. And this is a location that you're going to have to pretty much keep in mind. But uh, you'll see these mushroom trees. Throughout the mushroom tree area, there's also a life pod in one of the mushroom tree areas. But throughout these areas, you will find a couple really unique things. You will find uh, most of the enemies or entities in here are not hostile. You're going to find your limestone, sandstone chunks. You may get lucky enough to find a gel sack, which if you do, I'll show you what you do with that later. It's a very much needed resource. And you can also enter the blood kelp trench if you have the dive capabilities. 
but I don't recommend that. You will need to find and also take a few of these samples. So hit a few of these mushroom things with your knife to get the samples from them. This is where you're probably going to need depth module one for the sea moth. So this thing right here, I like to call it M tree. That's what my beacon is. It's actually the mushroom tree is what uh, most people call it. You can find gel sacks on it. And there's also little caves. Now, the reason why this is a very important spot is this is the most notable landmark. It's super easy to find. And if you come in here, you will find eventually a cuttlefish egg, little metallic black single slot egg. Pick that up, take it back and uh, put it in a locker until you can build the alien containment facility. The Degazi habitat at the 500 meter mark will give you the ability to build the Degazi habitat. Also, I should mention before I go any further, any vehicle and structure can be repaired if it takes damage and isn't completely destroyed with the repair tool. So we just topped off Seamoth's health there. In this area, it's very important because you can go through and find bits and pieces that you can scan. Uh, in this particular area, you'll find moon pool fragments, you'll find the cyclops hull fragments, and you'll also find modification station fragments. You can even find some of the fragments allowing you to build the mobile vehicle bay. And once you have the mobile vehicle bay, then you can build your Seamoth, Prawn Suit, Cyclops, and eventually the Neptune rocket. So it's exploration from here you'll collect resources until you can upgrade the depth module on your seamoth that's the next thing that i recommend doing now i'll show you the depth upgrade costs just so that you're familiar with it if you don't find the upgrade for the seamoth immediately you can make it but i found mine in the aurora so you could say that wasn't really that expensive to find. But you will need to find or at least upgrade. Also in the Aurora, you'll get the thermal blade, which makes eating fish like super easy because you put a battery on your knife. You hit a fish with it. It cooks the fish. You eat it. Anyways, you'll be able to make the Seamoth Mark II upgrade, which is a, a plasteel ingot, the magnetite or whatever you want to call it, and enamel glass. I'll show you how to get those resources, but I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. You should have enough of the magnetite from your exploration down into the jelly shroom caves to be able to make this, and the enamel glass is super easy. But we're going to go ahead and bypass that step for just a second. You also will need the plasteel ingot and three rubies to make the Mark III upgrade. Now, the Mark III upgrade does allow you to have a crush depth of 900 meters, but this game very much likes to push the boundaries of your dive depth, so keep that in mind. This Degazi habitat, this signal, is one of the important ones, and I will show you where to find that, but uh, I'm going to go through another area, and uh, I'll take you through that in a second actually the next zone is going to be the blood kelp zone i recommend if you're already here at the m tree or the mushroom tree that you actually go over here to the blood kelp zone first again placing beacons whenever you can it's super helpful because that's going to be your main source of navigation especially at night but the blood kelp zone is going to hold two resources that you definitely will need later on in the game and right around now you're going to start needing them uh, gel sacks rubies and most importantly blood oil so this is the easier of the two zones that you can find blood kelp in there is a Leviathan class entity in here, but you don't really have to worry about it too much. <coughs> First thing you're going to want to do, dive down, scan and pick up a deep mushroom, dive down, scan and pick up blood oil. 
at least two of them. You can also find quartz and stuff down here. Scan and pick up a sample of the ghost weed. Place a beacon. And then I would recommend returning home. Because that's all you really need to do right here at this particular point. For now. Keeping in mind that if you venture too far out into that area, there is a Leviathan glass enemy. Which are pretty much like the most dangerous creatures in the game, are Leviathan class. But there are different types of Leviathans. So you're going to want to go to that uh, proposed Degazi habitat 500 meters down. That's pretty much going to be your next goal, or I would recommend it being your next goal. A little bit of side resource farming. If you can get uh, the MK1 and MK2 depth module upgrades for your Seamoth, which should give you a diving depth crush-wise of 500 meters, and that's more than enough for the Degazi habitat down there. I did it with a crush depth of 300 on my Seamoth and only a single air tank, so it was uh, frustrating, but there was a lot of good stuff down there. That is also one of three entrances, if I'm not mistaken, to the Lost River, which is going to be one of the areas that you will spend the longest amount of time in. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you this Degazi habitat because, like I said, there's an achievement associated with it. Any of the achievements that say, like, Discover X location... Most of them are related to a data pad or multiple data pads that you have to pick up, PDAs. Make sure you thoroughly search the area and pick up all of said PDAs. It's just easier if you do it that way. This way you won't miss out on anything. Do be careful hitting small fish will damage your sub. Throughout this area, you can find different things. Uh, it's basically like a straight dive down if you want. I don't dive from that particular spot, though. Also, where I have placed the 500 beacon, that beacon has a nice little added bonus to it because that is where you can find the eye stalk samples, and you'll need those for later on in the game. Stay close to the wall. You never really want to be out in the open. And you're basically going to dive straight down. There is a wreck. There's several wrecks scattered around. Search is needed using those basic tips that I gave you. If you're diving straight down at this point, you're going to come into this cave, like I said, where the eye stalk seeds are. Go ahead and grab one of those. Scan that vent down there. And the funny thing is, you actually have to go past where it wants you to dive because that habitat is in a cave. Uh, now, because of the enemies that we will be fighting down there, I'll recommend repairing your Seamoth. Seamoth is also the fastest vehicle, fastest consistent speed vehicle, which is why I'm using this vehicle to navigate around to show you where you need to go. As you can see, there's sandstone chunks, things like that. You'll find um, rubies. And you'll find warpers. Now, if you encounter a warper, they can warp you out of your ship. So I recommend you GTFO. That's probably one of the most annoying enemies in this game. Outside of Leviathans, of course. Consider this to be one of the annoying spots. Obviously, if you have a 300 meter dive depth, this is going to be much harder for you to do. So I recommend that you have the 500 meter dive depth upgrade otherwise you'll have to park your ship at 300 above 300 meters and dive from there on just an air tank which if you have to do that it's not going to give you much time to explore also watch out for those crab squids they do release an emp pulse and that emp pulse can basically disable your ship and then they'll attack you and it's it's just not fun uh, but you'll find this habitat. Inside this habitat, you will find multiple 
PDAs for you to pick up, multiple things for you to scan, all sorts of fun stuff in here. Make sure you explore all three levels. That's the EMP pulse that I was talking about from that crab squid. They're also more attracted to the faster you're moving and if you have your lights on. Uh, keeping in mind from here, if you dive down even deeper, the, you will eventually come to some green puddles, as I like to call them, the little green goo area. And this is one of the entrances to the Lost River. That's uh, very important for you to keep in mind because the last stuff that you will need will be down there. So now that you have explored and by the time you get that, you should have the items required to make the MK3 depth module. Then you kind of have to find your way out. And uh, in all honesty, this is where I get myself turned around all the frickin' time, is finding my way out of this little cave. So don't be surprised if you get a little lost down there. Unless you want to use the Pathfinder tool, which is up to you. Once again, avoid the warper because he can warp you out of your ship. And that just is not fun. So now we have, by the time you get to this point, you're at like 70% of the way through the game. And you should have your gel sack and everything. I recommend you return to base, make any upgrades, cook any food, uh, do any kind of hunting, anything like that that you need and then go from there. Now, this video is longer due to the fact that I'm basically covering what should take you at the best 20 hours, at the worst 50 hours to complete the game. So needless to say, it's going to take a little bit longer. This entire time, you're going to want to be collecting and storing all sorts of resources, especially copper, titanium, crystal, things of that nature. Uh, you'll probably want to make the prawn suit so that you can get the prawn suit. And there's going to be one piece that's really annoying for you to get on the prawn suit. And that is going to be the enameled glass. You're going to need that also for the cyclops. Once you get the enameled glass, though, it's actually really freaking easy because all you need is a stalker's tooth. And I will show you how to get a stalker's tooth. Stalker's tooth or teeth, depending on how many you need, are super freaking easy, considering that our base is built over here in this area, which is very, very close to the creeper vine area. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to any of the creeper vine areas. Uh, those are the safer areas to go to, but you could also go to the crash site or anywhere that there is a stalker, that long nose kind of alligator looking fish. Park, when you find one, go into your inventory. If you have a piece of metal salvage, equip said metal salvage. Pull it out. Find a stalker. And that can be the hard part. Finding a stalker. Toss it out in front of the stalker and back away. Eventually, the stalkers will quit going after you. They'll go after the metal salvage. And when they pick up the metal salvage, there is a relatively high chance that they will lose a tooth. And that tooth will be on the ground for you to pick up. You pick it up. You use it with glass, which is two crystal at the fabricator. Bam, done, enameled glass, and you can make your prawn suit. The prawn suit and the cyclops have the deepest crush depth. Once they have their upgrades of any ship or ships, vehicles, whatever you want to call them in the game. So at this point, you should have alien containment. You can go to your base, build the alien containment, um, build any vehicle upgrades like depth wise or anything like that that you want. You're also going to want to come over here and make sure you build an outdoor grow bed. You'll want to take your gel sack, right? You'll want to take your mushroom and you'll want to take your blood oil that you picked up when you do this. You're going to take the mushroom, drop it on the ground. You're going to take the gel sack, drop that on the ground. Then you want to pull out your knife or thermal blade and you want to hack the gel sack up and you want to hack the mushroom. Go back to the planter, 
and then you will be able to plant your gel sac seeds and you can plant your mushroom seeds deep shroom spore technically those are the ones that you want you can also plant the blood oil keeping in mind that there can be nothing above the blood oil that you plant or it will not reach maturity over time these will grow as you can see when they're not ready they have a little progress window on them uh, the blood oil you can harvest once it starts appearing gel sacs you can harvest mushrooms you can harvest now the reason why you need the mushrooms is late game the gel sacs you need to go ahead and combine with rubies to make aerogel which is a resource that we use a lot and the blood oil you need to go ahead and combine to make benzene so that you can actually combine that and make your reinforced diving suit <coughs> excuse me i'm not feeling too well anyways you have two options now. You can either A, just kind of fiddle about however you want, which is entirely up to you. Or you can B, go ahead and progress with the storyline. I personally recommend progressing with the storyline. But that's entirely up to you. You'll also eventually scan the pieces for the battery charger and the power cell charger. And you'll definitely want to make those as soon as you can. That makes life a lot easier. Remember to make multiple solar panels on your base or multiple means of powering your base so that it doesn't run out of power. Otherwise, life support will go down. And of course, just every time you come back, keep grabbing your med kits so that you can get your free health. And then uh, you can stack lockers like I do. Put whatever you want in the locker. You, know, you can put your seeds in there if you have more seeds than what you can plant. You'll also get lithium. <clears throat> but basically, you probably will not have the resources to take your sub down. So at this point, you kind of have to do double the work. I I'm not going to say it's 100% double the work, but for the purposes of the video, I'm not going to actually do double the work. But more than likely, you'll take your sea moth down, and you're going to take your sea moth to the really annoying area that is the Lost River, and you're going to want to take a couple beacons down there, one to place at the entrance, one to place at the hole, and that really depends on what depth upgrade you have. 500 meters, you can see most of it, but not all of it. 900 meters, you can see all of it, but the lava zone. Uh, and that is the deepest biome that you can go with the Seamoth. After that, it becomes pointless, and you are going to need the Cyclops and the Prawn Suit. You get an achievement for making the Cyclops. You get an achievement for making the Prawn Suit. <coughs> so, obviously, I have all of my stuff maxed out, which is going to make this a lot easier. But you're either going to need to run a scouting run, and then you're going to need to run back with your sub or you're going to have to get a little on the creative side. For the purposes of the video, I'm running one run instead of running two runs. I recommend you run the scouting run first. Run that in the seam off so that you get familiar with where you're going. Your next run is going to be with the Cyclops. Now, the Cyclops is a pain in the ass if I do say so myself. Uh, it's a lot harder to steer, and the viewfinder is, in my opinion, really annoying with it because most of the view below you is blocked by the HUD. But uh, you basically want to find your beacon that you placed. Like for me, that's the one for blood kelp. And you're going to want to go that way. Now, this is basically your final run, okay? Okay. <clears throat> I skipped ahead, I farmed all the resources, because you can do that without the upgrades. I placed my beacons with the sea moth, and then I made Mark 2 on the Cyclops, and Mark 1 depth on the Prawn Suit, giving me a crush depth of 1,300 meters, allowing me to fully explore the Lost River area. I then made the final two upgrades after my first run, which was a very sketchy run, 
Uh, but I got it done. Keeping in mind with the Cyclops, your vertical controls uh, to raise and lower depth are done with the right and left bumpers on the Xbox. There is no way to do that with just the general left stick. I also have a lot of upgrades on my sub, but that's because my sub right now is currently maxed. And this is just strictly for the purposes of the video to show you where things are, because if you're playing on Xbox, it's going to be very annoying to play through the game and not know where anything is. Since we can't pull up coordinates, that is. And you'll have to make two runs. You're going to need either a shitload of air tanks on you and batteries for the Sea Glide, or you are going to need um, the, uh, the depth upgrades. <laughs> I would recommend you do the depth upgrades. My friend did it with the air tanks, and while he got the job done, uh, to me... I would probably die because I would get myself lost and then not be able to find a way out before I got killed. So anyways, the first run you do with your basic upgrades, you drop down in your prawn suit and you get the achievement um, and you also collect the last most annoying and hardest to get resource that you need to fully max out your depth modules. So right now we're simply trying to get to the blood kelp area. This is standard speed on the sub. As you can see, standard speed isn't exactly that fast. Slow is even slower. And silent running is... Well, silent running just isn't worth it. There is a feature that I do believe most people will like, and that feature is called Sonar. I recommend that you have that upgrade. As soon as you can make it, make it. And what that does is you click it on, you toggle it like I just did, and it makes a much friendlier navigation, to say the least. You can also just continue to get in and out of your sub and do it that way. So uh, if you don't have sonar or you don't have the power to use sonar, because the first time you go down here, it's going to be sketchy as hell. But if you don't have the power to use your sonar, you can just constantly get out of your sub. And then the entrance is, if you look here, southwest. So... My sub is pointing in the wrong direction. I actually need to turn that around so I can enter the Lost River. Like I said, the first time you come down here, it's going to be a lot harder than the second time you come down here. The second time you come down here, once you have the upgrades, it won't really be that big of a deal. As you can see, I've attracted the attention of a friend that I really don't want. Um, that is the Leviathan that I mentioned earlier. So south southwest, I'm gonna attempt to get through here without attracting him too much. Uh, we'll go ahead and put on the sonar, and we are now going to dive into the Lost River biome, which is divided up into multiple subsections. There's a lot of stuff you can mine if you brought your prawn suit with your drill arm. The prawn suit with the drill arm is the only vehicle in the game that allows you to mine from resource nodes. Uh, you'll find gold, silver, titanium, lead. You'll also find nickel ore, which is very important. You can find that down here uh, in nodes that you can drill. And there is another leviathan down here, so be careful of him. I recommend conserving power that you turn off sonar and only use it when you need to like i said it's not the easiest thing in the world navigating this cyclops down here in my opinion it's actually a bit of a pain in the ass and uh, i do use the sonar feature quite a bit you can park your sub and then get out 
and use your prawn suit to harvest resources if you would like to. It's a good idea to harvest the resources, and the first time you come down here, especially with the sea moth, that's probably what you're going to be doing. Do not enter the green fog unless you are in a vehicle. My depth is 640 meters, so this is still explorable with the max depth on our sea moth. We are about to dive even deeper, though, and this is where you basically need your cyclops and or prawn suit. Again, the entire Lost River area can be navigated in the Cyclops, but it is definitely a pain in the ass cheeks to do. And you will have to toggle your uh, sonar on and off so that you don't waste too much battery. I have a lot of batteries and I have a thermal reactor, so I'm not really worried about it right now. At this point, you're going to see all these volcanic structures, which you will have your thermal reactor the second time you come down here in the Cyclops. Like I said, the first time is going to be a pain in the ass. The second time is super easy, and the second time you come down here, you're basically going to finish the game for all intents and purposes. So we're a bit stuck on a tree. And that happens. You can do this with the sea moth with MK3 depth. And you'll set your beacon down here for MK3 depth. I hope that you guys are watching the entire video, but if you're only looking for specific parts, you can feel free to skip around in the video. I just wanted to show off everything that you could possibly want. Like I said, you can do this in the sea moth with MK3. You just have to be careful. We're at a depth of 840 meters. And we are at one of the facilities, one of the alien facilities. There's an achievement for finding this facility. This is the one where you basically discover the Lost River. Um, there are some creatures out here, like that one right there, that will attack you if you're swimming around or in a small vehicle. But they will not attack the Cyclops. Park here, go inside that station, scan what you need to scan, pick up the data, and exit the area. At that point, continue on, and you can either just continue this way and exit, or you can go into the lava zone, which going into the lava zone is what you're going to need to do. And that's what I'm going to show you exactly how to do, because like I said, this is the end of the game and the most annoying part of the game. Now, you can tell it's taken a while, even though I've been going at standard speed, which is the safest fastest speed for the cyclops and i've basically been in the game for an hour and 20 minutes um i will definitely have this done by before two hours though because i'm pretty much at the very end steps try not to crash on anything um do park your cyclops back here a bit or if you're in the sea moth stay back and set your beacon there is a Leviathan class enemy up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes he's on the far side. You can see him right there on the far side. And sometimes you can sneak past him, but a lot of times you can't sneak past him. So like I said, the very first time you come down here is going to be interesting compared to the second time you come down here. You can use a creature decoy if you want, but uh, I find that they're not really that helpful. So turn on your sonar when the Leviathan is relatively far away from you and dive. Just dive, 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 dive. You'll probably get attacked, but don't worry too much about that because, you know, not much you can do. Try to stay in the middle of the area. Congratulations, you are now in the lava zone. If you have a thermal reactor, you'll be good. I just got attacked by the Leviathan. As you can see, I did not make it. Your ship can take a good number of hits from the Leviathan. You could also activate shields if you have the shield module. I don't have that right now. Well, I mean, I do have it. I just didn't turn it on. Before you go any further, save your game. Get out of your sub. 
take a look at where you took damage and go fix it. If you took damage. If you didn't take damage, then you don't have to worry about this step. To fix it, super simple. Grab your repair tool and go ahead and repair the leak. If you have a thermal reactor, you'll basically never run out of power. If you don't have a thermal reactor, though, you're going to see these little leeches. Uh, they're called lava leeches. You can see one right here. They'll attach themselves to your ship. They do not do damage, but they suck the energy out of your ship at a fairly fast ratio. Uh, there's also stuff down here for you to mine with your prawn suit. So, at this point, you need to do a couple things. There is a achievement, actually several achievements associated with being down here. You'll need your ion cubes and your purple tablets. Keep those on you at all times. Or at least a few on you at all times. We're going to come to a relatively large open area. But you can see that right there. Don't engage that. Okay? Just, just don't. I scanned it. He does not like being scanned. Alright? Just trust me on that. Don't do it. For the purposes of the video, though, I am going to skip going into the thermal plant. Just know that you will need at least two purple tablets when you go into the thermal plant, and there is an achievement for going into the thermal plant. So, moving on specifically from here, I'm going to get out of the vehicle, and I'm going to show you where you need to be. I recommend that you park your vehicle back here, turn off the lights, turn off the engine so that it's the least likely to get attacked. <coughs> Position the middle of your sub right around this area, right here where it's nice and flat, and then take your prawn suit the rest of the way. It's possible to do this with a sea glide and spare air tanks, but it'll be cutting it close. That is the sea dragon leviathan, which is the most dangerous creature in the game, period. End of story. Highly aggressive. Um, as you swim through this area, he has a huge path that he patrols. He can be on the right, he can be on the left, he can be behind me, he can be over where my base is. As you can see, I built a little base down there. It's nothing but a scanner room with a thermal generator. But uh, you're going to see these blue crystals the first time you come down here. You want to mine them until you have at least a total of 14 pieces. Then what you want to do is inside your prawn suit, of course, go ahead and look for one of these entrances right here. I put a light stick there just to make it easy. And this is the entrance. There's a cave. You go through the cave uh, using your prawn suit, and then it's hollow in the center, which is where the thermal plant is. You go into the thermal plant. You'll use your purple tablet to unlock a force field and get a blue tablet that you need later on. You'll also need to make an extra, a second blue tablet. And then you will use the second purple tablet to open up a room, grab the data from the terminals, you'll get your achievement, and you'll learn how to make ion batteries, something that is very, very nice. At this point, you're done, unless you're really, really super brave. Because if you don't have the thermal reactor, your ship is going to be losing power very quickly. And when I say very quickly, I mean like very freaking quickly because of the leeches. The leeches will drain power super fast. If you have the thermal reactor, then you don't have to worry about it. So at this point, I recommend you go back up, take your 14 pieces of the blue crystal uh, surface, Make the MK3 depth upgrade for the Cyclops. Make the MK2 depth upgrade for the Prawn Suit. Make the Thermal Reactor for the Cyclops. And make the Thermal Reactor for your Prawn Suit. Grab your remaining Ion Cubes. Grab your remaining Purple Tablets. And definitely the one blue tablet, if not two blue tablets, if you made a second one. Come back down here, and then you'll be back at this point. So... Moving forward at this point, I'm going to show you the last area. It is possible for you to make it here without using this sub 
and prawn suit and all of that stuff. But like I said, it's super freaking risky. You won't be able to carry much of anything because you won't have the storage space since you'll be carrying a bunch of spare air tanks with you. And you'll need batteries or at least an ion battery for your sea glide. So try to hug the bottom of this area. I'm using sonar, as you can see, so I can see where I need to go. Plus my base is a landmark up there. Uh, since the scanner room has cameras on it, it's super easy to use the cameras as like a, as basically a landmark, uh, a navigation point to say the least. Now this is skipping. I'm not going to take the sub back to the surface and make the upgrades and everything because I just told you to make the upgrades and I just showed you where you're going to get all of the resources. You'll spend a lot of time in the Lost River and the Lava Zone farming resources with your prawn suit and the drill arm. Eventually you're going to come through here and it seems so slow driving through this because this ship is not really that fast. If I could do this with the sea moth, I would greatly prefer to do it with the sea moth. But you're going to see that guy. This is, by the way, the second sea dragon leviathan in this area. And you just kind of want to do your best to avoid him. He is hostile, but he's only hostile if you get too close. So try to keep a rock between you and him. If he is going to attack, activate your Cyclops shield. But the Cyclops shield does drain power extremely quickly, so bear that in mind. You'll eventually come to basically this hole in the ground, and you're going to just dive. Dive to escape the sea dragon. If you have extra beacons with you, bring the beacons. I was out of beacons, so that's why I don't have a beacon down here. Eventually, you'll see this little hole. This little hole right here. And you can go through that hole in order to find the last place that you need to. Which, guess what is on the other side of that hole? Yet another freaking sea dragon. I personally recommend that you don't go through that hole with your sub. But if you want to, you can. At this point, power down your ship. At the very least... Turn your lights off, turn your sonar off, turn your engine off. If you want to leave the engine running for a emergency, then put it on slow so it makes the least amount of noise. It doesn't really matter power-wise with your thermal reactor because as you can see, my ship is recharging energy faster than the leeches can suck the energy out of it. And this is basically the safe spot. Go ahead and enter your prawn suit at this point. Now, like I said, you must have the max depth upgrade on your prawn suit. And I would also recommend having the jump jet upgrade and energy efficiency upgrade. Also, the thermal reactor is super nice. As you can see down here, there's plenty of that, plenty of resources, plenty of all sorts of resources down here for you. Now, keeping in mind, this is very dangerous to do. Very dangerous to do with the prawn suit. If you must do it with the prawn suit, because you want to be careful with your ship, then memorize where the ledges are, because your jump jets will barely be enough to get you back up here. So you'll have to like kind of walk the wall a bit, and then make sure that you remember where those spots are. Otherwise, you can take your ship down. Um, but like here, let me show you, give you an idea. Like your jump jets, they, they go up a decent amount. 
but they are pretty limited. So it's a good idea. Go ahead and save your game up here just in the event that you have any issues. Also remember that it takes a while to save the game. So I recommend bring up the pause screen because if you don't remain in the same spot while the game is saving, it won't save, it'll spin on into infinity and it'll just be an absolute terrible experience for you because uh, you'll get the glitch and then you'll have to redo all of your work or you'll have to finish the game in one sitting from that point. Now, save times on this game can take up to 20 minutes, so I will be back as soon as it finishes. All right, sorry about that delay. After 15 minutes, the game finally finished saving. So anyways, once you come down here, uh, I'm not going to show you the facility because it's not taking too long in recording, but you'll take your prawn suit and or cyclops and prom suit you'll go down here you'll go through this little lava area be sure to stay out of the lava but uh it, it's a, like i said it's a real pain in the ass to make it back up there using just the prawn suit alone i'm just gonna show you the area since i actually have the save you can take your cyclops down here it's easier if you take your cyclops down here You'll eventually come to a large open area. And in this large open area, I parked my Cyclops over there in those caves on the left side. And it was safe there, but uh, the Sea Dragon Leviathan can go over there. If you look to your right, you see that building. That's the primary containment facility. In there is the... Um, sea Emperor Leviathan, that's the one that you have to help. There's also six different rooms that you have to open up and a Ion Cube Fabricator. Uh, with that being said, the Ion Cube Fabricator will give you an infinite supply of Ion Cubes. You use those to open the warp gates. Once you've opened up all of the warp gates, you use an Ion Cube on the warp gate in the aquarium. You use a ion cube on the incubator, and of course you talk to the sea dragon, or not sea dragon, sorry, the sea emperor leviathan. Uh, at that point comes basically the final step in the quest where you will need to make the hatching enzyme. It's relatively easy to do. Uh, there are five pieces, five pieces of plants required for it, and... There's four warp gates in there, which lead to four of the five different plants in different biomes. And then, of course, the fifth plant is located actually in the aquarium itself. Uh, once you get those plants, you can go ahead, make the enzyme come back, hatch the eggs by putting it in the incubator, go through that cutscene, interact with the concentrated enzyme 42, which will give you your achievement for curing yourself. You can now also proceed with basically ending the game. So I recommend you get all your vehicles out of here because there's no point in keeping your vehicles down here. You're going to get your vehicles out of here the exact same way that you got them in here. Just going in the opposite direction. If you have the shield module, you can also activate the shield module real quick to go ahead and get your pesky leeches the hell off of your ship because as you can see even with a thermal reactor I'm down to 83% power. Now I don't think I necessarily have to show you guys how to get out of here so if you want to skip ahead a few minutes in the video you can do so. Literally all you are doing is backtracking. You're just backtracking the way you came. But uh, I'm not going to edit it out just so that you guys can see how to get out of here in case you don't know.
It's really only the Leviathan class enemies that you have to worry about too, by the way. The little lava lizards and shit like that, they're they're not much of a threat at all, if any. The only thing that I wish is I wish that the sub was actually faster than it is. If the sub was faster than it is, it would be a fantastic thing. Also, you may eventually want to make the fire suppression module for the sub, but that's up to you. Once you are comfortably out of range of that first sea dragon leviathan and ready to start ascending, I would recommend you toggle off sonar, point your ship in the eastern direction, or mostly eastern, and park over a lava vent. Go ahead and sit here for a while. Um, if you have the thermal reactor, let your thermal reactor recharge your batteries. It's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not. And uh, definitely go out and repair any hull damage that you might have taken trying to get out of that area. You can get rid of any pesky leeches that might be on your ship. As you can see, they are attracted to your sub like it's nothing. I was only parked here for a few seconds and already had three of them attach themselves. They don't do damage, but they do drain the batteries. And, uh, well, we're trying to recharge the batteries, not drain them. Using the sonar drains batteries fairly quickly. And shield drains batteries insanely fast. I have 2800 power in my ship, but that's because I have two ion power cells. Each ion power cell is 1,000 power, whereas you normally get 200 from a regular power cell. So I have more than enough power to make it back. And uh, for the purposes of the video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Basically, you want to point your ship towards the east. Try and stay away from the rock wall as best as possible. And uh, you want to ascend. little easier said than done because you can get stuck on the cave walls relatively easily uh, right above me is a leviathan class enemy so i got really unlucky with that the fact that he's right there you can wait and uh, try and get him to go in a different direction if you want but i just want a gtfo so i'm going to activate sonar and activate shields Proceeding in the east-north direction. As you can see, my batteries are depleting themselves quickly. I have been attacked a couple times by that leviathan. I should be out of range of the leviathan now, so I can safely deactivate shields before I lose too much power. At this point, it's no longer necessary to run sonar. And we're just going to exit the Lost River biome. Exit the Lost River biome. Uh, go ahead and if you want, you can go to the enforcement platform for the very first time. Or you can go to the enforcement platform for the very last time. It's entirely up to you. Or you can return to your base. You can do some resource farming, whatever you want to do. But you should have a good chunk of resources because you can use your habitat builder to build lockers on your cyclops and then you really only have to go down here twice. If you want to explore, you can explore, but if you just want to complete the game and get the achievements and be done with it, then following my video is probably your fastest bet. In my opinion, it is guaranteed to be your fastest bet. Uh, so we're going to come out into, like, the Grand Reef area. 
if you've been following along, then you have the pieces that you need for the hatching enzyme. Otherwise, it's a bit of a chore to get the pieces that you need for the hatching enzyme. I will also be leaving in my life pod, or not my life pod, but like my time capsule thing, I will be leaving a hatching enzyme. So whoever finds my time capsule, hit me up on YouTube, put a, uh, a comment on this video. Let me know that you found it and uh, if it helps you out. Because, uh, well, time capsules are something else I'll get to in a minute. So we're pretty close to the enforcement platform. I'm going to take the sub to the enforcement platform right now and just show you that. You will probably have already found the enforcement platform before you go ahead and do all of those steps that I just showed you, depending on at what point you watch this video. And technically, you can go to the enforcement platform before. It was actually the very first island that I found by accident was the enforcement platform. There's also another Leviathan out here, so be wary of that. And this is why I don't really recommend taking the Cyclops here. So just kind of keep that in mind that there is a Leviathan swimming around here. And he really gets pissy. So uh, we're actually just going to leave this area. It, it, it's not worth it to mess with that Leviathan. That's why I said it's not really the best idea to take the Cyclops over here. You're better off taking the sea moth or just taking your sea glide and parking your sub somewhere safe. You can usually park your sub right about here. And he won't really bother you. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Because you actually you need to go to this platform. So for the purposes of the video, I will risk my sub getting destroyed I would normally not recommend this and I would normally not even take my sub over here I would head straight back to my base grab my sea moth and use the sea moth for this but you have to go to the enforcement platform the first time you go to the enforcement platform is going to be probably the first or second time that you actually encounter a purple tablet and it will be the first time that you learn that you're infected. Unless you learn that you're infected at the same time that you carry yourself, which would be kind of funny if you did it that way. Uh, so as you can see, it's kind of a weird looking platform over there. There is no really annoying Leviathan. The Leviathan is over here in the deeper water by the platform. Uh, you can take your sub in. I should mention that there is a dock um on the far side of the enforcement platform but since the leviathan was already pissed off with me it's just better to take your sea glide because i can't do anything about the leviathan not right now at least there's also a cave on this island on this island you can find a purple tablet you will need the purple tablet come down here you'll put the purple tablet here that opens the force field like I said this is the first platform that I found and I found it by pure accident I was looking for floater island and I found this place instead
go in, go down. There's a lot of running in this place. Like, a lot of running. Go down, go around. There's data terminals that you have to grab. Then there'll be this shiny thing. Oh no, I've fallen. Don't worry, it won't kill you. This is like the moon pool, basically the dock. You can bring your sub or sea moth or prawn suit in there if you want. <clears throat> like I said, it's just more annoying than it's worth super annoying in my opinion to get to with that leviathan trying to attack you so i just didn't want to bother with it it was faster for me to use my sea glide there's various objects in here that you can scan but you want to find the main control room is what you want to do the first time if you come here without doing the steps that I showed you in the lava zone, you'll find out that you're infected and you'll find out what this platform is. The second time you come here after doing the steps that I showed you, well, you need to do this to DV, sorry, deactivate the gun. And you'll notice that the building goes dark. Which means, congratulations, you deactivated the gun and you are literally at the final step. Now, whether you build the rocket first or deactivate the gun first doesn't matter. Because if you build the rocket first and you attempt to launch, it will tell you to deactivate the gun. So you literally have to deactivate the gun. Also, for some reason, this area does not render very well, and I think that's due to all the textures. There is a warp gate here. Um, I don't use that warp gate ever. But you can if you want to. The easiest way I find to get out of here is to actually use the moon pool. Like I said, you can take your sub down here if you want to. I'll probably run into Mr. Leviathan again. Hopefully not. I would really prefer not to. Also, don't go inside the caves. I've gotten myself lost inside the caves a number of times. Yep, I just swam past Mr. Leviathan. And he is not very happy about that. But I am out of his aggro range, thankfully. So we can GTFO now. Grab your sea moth, grab your prawn suit, grab your sub, whatever it is that you wanted to grab. If it's dark out, you might need to use sonar a bit just to get an idea for where you need to go. And now we are going to do the very last steps. You are almost ready to escape the planet. Hell yeah. And at this point, you should only have two achievements that you don't have unlocked. Uh, so now you just need the resources. But like I said, you should have a lot of resources because you're going to have your lithium. You're going to have your titanium. Just pick up everything as a general rule. And now you can do whatever you want. You can build a massive undersea base. 
you can explore the rest of the world. You can sit there and do absolutely nothing, or you can get the last set of achievements and leave the game. Keeping in mind that you will not be able to take this unlocks and like data and stuff with you, as far as I know, to another game. Uh, there might be a way to do that, but I have never found that option yet. So we have to build the Neptune rocket. I already have that rocket built. Like I said, you can do the steps in any order. It's not specific. Building the launch pad, other than the launch pad being massive, isn't really a problem. I do recommend that you make a save right before you build the launch pad because I ran into a weird graphical bug where the launch pad fell into the water and then it launched out of the water like a rocket and flew off the map. And that was just the launch pad that actually occurred on stream. So if you guys want to check that out, you can check that out on my Twitch channel. It was freaking nuts. But yep, it happened. Once you build the launch pad, which is relatively simple, there's going to be several pieces to the rocket that you have to build on the launch pad. The first is the gantry. It's relatively inexpensive. And I say that relatively because you will need a lot of titanium super expensive in terms of titanium costs so you may have to run around and use your scanner room find some more titanium but you should have more than enough if you went with a base build similar to mine where you didn't waste a lot of resources all right so we made it home we are going to leave this place and get the last two achievements. Hell yes. Go ahead and power off my Cyclops. Let's get ready to leave. We're almost ready to leave, I should say. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, I have a bunch of resources. I have a bunch of med kits. I have a bunch of power cells, you know, all sorts of stuff. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be the nicest person that you're going to run across. So anyways, you're going to want to build all three pieces. Each one requires a plasteel ingot and then some other resources. So it's the most expensive thing that you'll build in this game, period. I just need to grab one last thing off my sub. I'll go up there and show you the Neptune rocket and we'll get ready to launch. There is storage on the Neptune rocket, so keep that in mind. I have absolutely no idea why there's storage on the Neptune rocket, but there is. If there's something that you... I don't think you can take anything with you, but if there is something that you can take with you well i would recommend uh going ahead and taking whatever you can with you that way but that's entirely up to you 
whatever you want to take with you or attempt to take with you. I don't think you actually can take anything with you. But if there is something that you want to take, then go ahead and do it that way. I'm just getting stuff ready for my time capsule real quick. You can also build a nuclear reactor, by the way, guys. I never built a nuclear reactor, which is why I have a lot of this different resources and stuff left over. I wanted to build a nuclear reactor so I could build like a really cool freaking base and just, you know, make this neat thing. I was going to build it, you know, down deep, like in the Grand Reef or the lava area or something. And uh, I'll show you the nuclear reactor, but it takes a lot to build it. It takes a plasteel ingot and an advanced wiring kit and three lead. And then you have to make nuclear rods for it. But uh, it is super cool. Like, it's a very unique thing that you can build if you want. So if you want to take a few things with you, take a few things with you, uh, especially nickel ore. But like I said, I doubt any of this. Like, I extremely doubt any of this you can actually transfer. But hey, if you can, go for it. If you can't, whatever. Uh, say goodbye to your base. Say goodbye to your aquarium. If you want, let your pets out. Because we are gone. We are out of here. It is Astro Lo Vistos, baby. If you want a cool photo, go ahead and uh, like get everything in position and take a nice snapshot of it. Because it is time to leave. We are saying goodbye to this world. And getting our last two achievements. By the way, you create the Neptune rocket launch pad from the mobile vehicle bay. And then you can change the color on your rocket when you build it. So I made mine black as opposed to white. Because, you know, why not? Black and yellow looks better than white and yellow. But this is the platform that you'll use to build the different segments and you'll have to build the gantry the boosters the fuel and the cockpit uh, it will also require two ion power cells to build one of the parts for this rocket so make sure absolutely sure that you have enough ion cubes in that primary containment facility where the sea emperor leviathan was is a power or ion cube fabricator and you can use your prawn suit to mine it and basically get infinite ion cubes. <clears throat> At this point, go ahead and get ready to go in the rocket. I recommend that you make a save right here just in the event that the last two achievements can be a little bit buggy. So I will see you all when this is done saving. Well, that time it saved really quickly. Enter your rocket. Now, the funny thing is, the door will remain open, but if you click on it from the inside, it says exit rocket, so don't do that. There's a series of latches and a series of storage panels here. I recommend you go ahead and put the resources that, if you want to attempt to keep, put them in here. Uh, I don't know if you can actually build anything in here or not. I've never really tried to do that. But, like, um, there's another storage box right here. I think this is just purely cosmetic. So, you know, for sheets and giggles, we'll uh, throw some stuff in here like that. Put my sea glide, you know. And there's yet another locker. Like I said, I don't think you can actually take any of this with you, but um, I'm going to try it for the heck of it.
Yeah, those are the six items. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the nicest person ever. So if you find this time capsule, please let me know you found it, and if it helped you out. Communications systems array active. Go ahead and pull all of these switches. Hydraulics. It's funny the way it says pressurizing high hydraulics. And we're going to go ahead and climb up past what looks like a giant reactor that we're sitting on. As you can see, we've got three systems checked. We've got other systems are red, though. So we're going to make the time capsule. Now, please don't be a dick, okay? I have found three time capsules in my world. Yeah, it's most of them. They're just images of a base and two were really crappy resources. I got like a knife and an air pump from one. I got a scanner and a cutting tool from the other. If you're leaving a time capsule, you're at the absolute end of the game. Please leave people that like actually some useful stuff uh, you can leave a photo if you want a lot of people leave photos of their base or like random glitches that might have occurred in the game like this one where the water was on fire or resource locations things like that i'm just gonna put uh, this picture in here because i think he's really really cool Uh, you can write a message, whatever you want, and then you can put items. You can put six items. So to whoever finds my time capsule, I am literally giving you the keys to the game, basically. I am giving you the Cyclops Depth Module Mark Three, the Prawn Suit Depth Module Mark Two, the Prawn Suit Thermal Reactor, the Cyclops Thermal Reactor, the Hatching Enzyme, and an ion power cell so that you're basically you're good to go you're not going to have the issues you're not going to have to make two trips to the lava zone you'll literally only have to make one trip you can make the cyclops and the prawn suit install those upgrades and just go for it you'll even have the hatching enzyme i'm doing like three quarters of the the heavy lifting work for you so if you find it let me know Please and thank you. All right, so as you can see, my time capsule is ready. Like I said, I really hope that someone finds this and you will leave a comment on the video. There's uh, the picture, there's the message, and I'm being insanely nice to the person that finds this, giving them literally the best and most expensive engine upgrades. You can see the little check mark on the time capsule. Time capsule is now ready. Time capsule is locked and loaded. Good to go. Last thing we have to do, activate life support. Very important. You don't want to die leaving the planet. Go ahead and boot up the computer. Primary computer systems active. All systems are go. And once it says that, the chair turns, and you can now launch the rocket, enjoy the cinematic, and wait for your two achievements to unlock a few seconds after. If they don't unlock immediately, then you will need to reload your save, though. Caution approaching orbital debris field.
orbital debris field clear. Performing gravity turn maneuver. Confirm destination coordinates. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Engaging ion boosters in three, two, one. What is a wave without the ocean? A beginning without an end. They are different, but they go together. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sand. We are different, but we go together. And with that, congratulations, you have beaten Subnautica. If you followed my guide, you just earned 100% of the achievements in one playthrough, taking you mm, at best 20 hours, at worst 50 hours, depending on if you know where everything is. Thanks to the devs for making the game. It was fun. This game is currently available on Game Pass, so you can play it if you have Game Pass, or you can go ahead and buy it. If you do buy it, I recommend playing on PC because it does not have some of the issues that the xbox does until next time make sure you subscribe for more content my brothers and sisters i legion stay frosty